All right, thank you all so much for being here. And I am so excited as we get ready to study the Gospel of Mark together. Um, I think that Mark is a wonderful place to start reading the Bible because it's short. It's only 16 chapters. Um, and it's the story of good news. Mark took the time to write down the story of the life of Jesus because he felt like it was good news that needed to be shared. And I want you all to think a little bit about what you do when you have good news to share. So let's take a look at a couple pictures and just to give you an idea of what we typically do when we have good news. So this first one is an engagement, you know, the ring shot. Um, and this is just when people get engaged, they want to talk about it. They want to share it with their friends. So they post their picture uh, to let people know they feel compelled to share. The second one is another one. We got a puppy. So when you get a dog and you're excited about it, you want to tell your friends and gloat a little bit about how cute they are, so you post their picture. Um, if somebody in your family graduates, same thing. You want to put that picture up and so everybody can celebrate with you. There's something about us that likes to celebrate with other people. We want to share good news, not keep it to ourselves. And this last one um, is... People take pictures of their food. It's a weird thing. Um, but people like to brag a little bit, like, I just had the best meal ever, or I just found the best restaurant ever. And we want to talk about that with our friends so they can share in our joy. And that's really what Mark is doing when he sits down to write his gospel. Uh, his purpose is to share his joy and to share good news. So when we talk about Mark's gospel uh, gospel is sort of a funny word that we're not necessarily used to hearing. So the question is, what is a gospel? And gospel is a word that was made up um, in Old English from the word God spell. So, and then it sort of became gospel. Um, but it, in the Greek, it's evangelion, which is kind of a fun word to say, evangelion. Um, but it literally means good news. And in the ancient culture, in classical Greek, an evan evangelos was one who brought a message of victory or other political or personal news that caused joy. So examples of how this would be used would be if there were a new king or if there was some sort of military victory, they would send a messenger, an evangelion, out to share this news. And the news that they would share is, we have a new king, um, or we finally won the victory over our enemies, and everyone would celebrate because that is good news. So when the gospel writers sat down to write the story of the life of Jesus, they intentionally chose this word. And I want you to see that they saw themselves in this tradition of sharing good news about a new king and about a victory. So that's what's in their head. Sometimes that word, we, it's familiar. Maybe we've heard it, but we don't know where it comes from. And I think that's kind of exciting. Okay. Um, Mark 1.1 1, 1 is the beginning. It's the first verse of the book of Mark. And it says, this is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the son of God. So this is how Mark opens. He says, I'm telling you good news about Jesus because he's the Messiah, the son of God. So already he's setting the stage and he's saying, this is good news. I've got to share it. Um, so that's what he's setting out to do. So um, Mark is going to tell us the story of the life of Jesus. That is what he has in mind. And he believes that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of, God, the Son of God. So what is the good news about Jesus? What is it that Mark wants us to know? And first is that Jesus is the new king. And he came to bring victory over pain, evil, and death. So Mark is saying, we've got a new king, and he has achieved this victory, but it's a different sort of victory. It's not a military victory. Um, it's victory over pain, evil, and death, which is the human condition that we all experience. And he's saying, Jesus came to solve our problem in the sense of taking care of the th our greatest need. God has achieved salvation on our behalf through the historical events of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is the good news that Mark sets out to share with us. 
Okay, so who was Mark? Um, When we read the Gospels, it's important to know a little bit about the author of each Gospel. And in general, in the Bible, um, always to learn a little bit about who the author is, what is their purpose in telling their story or sharing their information, and who are they sharing it with All of those things factor into our understanding of the text. So who was Mark? John Mark was a student and friend of the Apostle Peter. So the Apostle Peter was one of the disciples of Jesus. He was one of the 12. John Mark was like Peter's assistant. Um, Mark collected Peter's sermons, wrote them down, and shaped them into an account of the life of Jesus. And some scholars actually believe that Peter uh, may have been illiterate or may not have been super skilled in writing, which is why he used the assistance of John Mark to do these recordings for him. If you recall, Peter was a fisherman um, in his prior career, and when he became a disciple, he was preaching these sermons, and there were people reacting to this and saying, where in the world did he get his education? Because we knew Peter, um, and he was an uneducated man, and here he is sharing the gospel in this very intelligent and carefully thought out way. So that was a surprise, and that's the gift of God in Peter's life, and John Mark didn't want those messages to get lost. So he took it upon himself to record or to write down Peter's sermons to make sure that all of us had access to the story of the life of Jesus. Okay, when did Mark write his gospel? This is another exciting piece of the story. Um, Scholars believe that Mark wrote his gospel 20 to 30 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus. So within 20 to 30 years, Mark wrote, wrote the gospel and so um, there were still eyewitnesses alive that could uh, that were familiar with the events that Mark described so they could either add detail or they could if they needed to counter some of the information he was sharing Uh, but there were people still alive who had seen Jesus and who had watched his life um, and who could interact with Mark about the story that he was writing Um, The other thing is that most scholars believe that Mark was the first one to sit down and to take on this project, that he was the first person to write a gospel. Uh, Mark's gospel, like I said, is the shortest. It's only 16 chapters. And so afterwards, you have Matthew and Luke, who uh, scholars believe looked at the gospel of Mark for inspiration when they wrote their own gospels, and they stretched it out and added a lot more details that they also didn't want to get missed or lost. But Mark came first. Okay, some distinctives of Mark's gospel. Mark begins the story of Jesus with his adult ministry, so he jumps right in. You won't hear Mark at Christmas time. Um, you'll hear Matthew and Luke because both of those have great stories about the birth of Jesus. John does something a little more philosophical with the birth of Jesus, but he does include parts of that. But Mark is the one he just starts right when Jesus was an adult and dives right in. Um, the word immediately is used over 40 times in Mark's gospel. Mark doesn't like to mess around. He just wants to get straight to the point. And so he's always using like, immediately Jesus went here or immediately this thing happened. So it's kind of fun when you're reading through there to listen for that word um, because he likes to use it a lot. Uh, Mark's gospel is shorter than any of the other gospels. It's only 16 chapters long. Uh, Mark is really determined to just put in what he thinks is essential for us to know about the life of Jesus. And there are 20 miracle stories in the Gospel of Mark. Mark, um, Some of the other Gospels will spend more time on the stories that Jesus told. Mark is really mostly interested in what Jesus did. Um, So there's a little bit of a difference there. There are, I think, three of Jesus' stories, and the rest is all action. So Mark really is the action Gospel. So the four Gospels, so Mark is one of four. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And sometimes people get confused about why we need four Gospels instead of, you know, just one story. Can we combine them all? But no, we don't want to do that because there are distinctives about each of the four. And it's really great to read them alongside of each other and to think about why each of those authors told the story in their own way. And because there are four different ones, we hear different perspectives, and we also see that there are different audiences, and these are each four different eyewitness accounts. 
And if you think about, if somebody is telling a story, if you're with a group of friends and somebody's telling a story that some, about something that they were all a part of, people will chime in and say, oh, but do you remember this part of that? Or did you remember seeing this? And so we're given the chance to have a much broader sense of the story when more people participate in telling it than if we just counted on one person's memory. So that's why it's kind of fun that we have four Gospels. About 20 years ago, I had a friend, a very sweet lady, who wanted to listen to the Bible on CD uh, for the first time. And she had never read the Bible, and she thought, I really ought to learn something about who Jesus was. So a friend of hers said, well, start with the gospel. Listen to the Bible while you're driving around, picking up your kids, or taking them from place to place. So she bought the Bible on CD to listen to in her car. And she said she listened to the first one, and it told about the birth of Jesus and the you know, death and resurrection of Jesus. It was really great. And then the story started over again. And then the story started over again. And then it started over again. And she was concerned that maybe something was wrong with the CDs. And so she drove back to the store where she bought them and said, there's something wrong with these CDs because it's the same story over and over. And they said, well, ma'am, it's it's the four gospels. There are four different versions of the same story. And she was so embarrassed because she didn't know that. And I I just think that's such a great story um, for all of us that we're all in different places when we start this journey of learning about Jesus. Um, So I'm just telling you, there's four Gospels, four of those, so don't be surprised. Um, As we begin, there are a few points that I want to emphasize about our study before we dive in. And the first is that our goal is to learn what the Bible says about about Jesus. Uh, You may have heard things about Jesus before. You may have seen things on TV about Jesus. um, We get a lot of input about Jesus from a lot of different sources, but I do think it's important to go back to what the Bible has to say about Jesus and let it speak for itself. And sometimes to be a little bit tunnel vision about that, um, just to focus on what we are learning about Jesus and less uh, being distracted by well, what does this mean about, you know, all kinds of things about different churches, but just to really focus on who Jesus is and what the Bible says about that as our starting point. There's plenty of time to talk about other things later on, but for now in our groups, I really just want us to focus on what the Bible has to say. Uh, This study that we will be doing in between our sessions together I like to call it the head bob method. And so what that means, it's kind of funny. You're going to read two chapters out of the Bible, and then there's a series of questions that you're going to answer and hear. And by head bob method, what I mean is it'll ask you a question, and then you look at your Bible for the answer, and then you write it down, and then you go back. And so it's back and forth. But all of the answers should be in the text of the Bible. So don't, you don't need any other sources. Um, you're just going back and forth between the two, writing things down. Um, each lesson should take about 20 minutes to complete, which is really sort of... Um, more time than I think it should take. You could probably do the whole week's reading and answer the questions in about 45 minutes if you wanted to do it in one setting, or you can break it up and do a little bit each day. It's really up to you. And then you will need a Bible for this study. Any modern translation will do. If you have any question about what that means, you can ask your leader, and I'm sure they would love to help direct you towards a specific Bible. The two best modern translations that I tend to use are the NIV, which is the New International Version, or the NLT, which is the New Living Translation. So either of those are great. Um, Also, if you want to go for the free option, um, there are Bible apps that you can get on your electronic devices, and two of those are Bible Gateway. You can download that and just use the Bible on your phone or whatever. Um, And the other is called life.church. So either of those are great free options for Bible apps. um, Or you can go out and buy your own Bible or ask someone to give one to you because that's the sort of gift people love to give. Um, But I want to say I'm so excited to begin this study with you. And I hope, my hope for you is that you will begin to learn why Mark called the life of Jesus good news. 
What was it about the life of Jesus that compelled him to share it? Um, Just as we saw at the beginning with those pictures, when we have good news, we want to share it with others. And Mark felt like this was pretty good news and wanted to share it with us. So I hope as you're reading that you'll be looking um, for what made it good. And I hope that you'll find that it's good news for you too. So let me pray and then you all can discuss this in your groups. Thanks. Lord Jesus, I thank you that uh, your life is good news for all of us. And I thank you for the time that we have to slow down and to read about it and to learn. And I pray for the people that are participating in this, that they will begin to learn something new about you and your love for them. Um, And that this would be an opportunity for them to see why your life has meaning for theirs. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you.